Homemakers, I'm really excited to get to talk to you about another one of my makes for the Tim Holtz Ideology Spring Release for 2023. I just love that Advantis and Tim decided to go ahead and release the salvage rabbits and the tiny eggs so we would have some time to make before the season came around. Now, the, the make that Tim did last year in his live that actually inspired uh, these products was the little barrel with the salvage rabbit and the tiny eggs made from baubles. So I thought, you know, I, I want to make one like he did, and I would like to find a way that I can maybe put it in something that I would be able to show or put around my house, you know, as a decor item. And so this is what I came up with, a book that lights up and showcases that really cute design by Tim. So I'm going to get started with the tutorial and show you how I made this. And then at the end, we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the things that I really love about this make. The products I plan to use for this project are the large vignette box and then the small vignette box, but not the smallest. There's one smaller and there's one larger. So this is the second smallest vignette box. I used this on a project a long time ago and it was just as a, like a gift uh, so that I could show a tag with it. And so I just wrapped it in some old Christmas ideology paper. And once that uh, project was done, I went ahead and ripped the paper off. So that's why it's covered like this. And I thought I could use it for a project later on rather than just you know, throw it away or keep it as a, a an empty present. So this is the project I think it's perfect for because it's going to be inside this larger box and no one will see it because I'm going to have a scene in here. Now for the cover of the book, I want to use a piece of uh, backdrops paper. And so I pulled out this marbled backdrop, but I thought it kind of had some fun Easter colors. And I also pulled out this one because I thought that it was not quite as in your face Easter. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet, but they're the entire piece. And uh, you want the entire piece on the large, if you're making the large box into a book, because if I cover it like this, you can see that there is just, let me get it kind of centered here. You can see that all the way around, there's about a quarter of an inch that it's a little bit too big. And that's on the front and that's on like both sides. And that's perfect because it bows out a little bit here, which is what we want on the spine. So it looks like a book. And then it will allow us to wrap this around that little piece of chipboard so that it actually looks like the spine. So if you can get it wrapped in one piece, that's really excellent and so that's why we want to use a whole baseboard or backdrop to do this so i will choose which one of these backdrops i'm going to use to cover it but then once it's covered i will actually be cutting the paper or the cover off where the book is and it will be adhered to this front of the book and then obviously adhered here to the front of the book then I'm going to, so let's just pretend that this is the cover. And again, I know you've already seen it, but I haven't. Um, then where the hole is, I will cover that with either this small uh, baseboard frame, lace baseboard frame, or the larger lace baseboard frame. And then that will allow me to kind of have this oval frame around a scene with the salvage bunnies, the tiny eggs, and probably also one of the barrels. I think that I'm not going to invent the wheel and do anything different. I think what I'm actually going to do is make basically what Tim has made in the past with the bunny and the eggs in the, in the barrel and then just go ahead and put that in there with some Easter grass and uh, some lights so that it's just a fun scene and it will be in a book that you can, well, uh, you know, a fake book that you would be able to maybe sit this way on a bookshelf with some other real books, you know, on each side. And it can be just kind of a neat, fun Easter spring decor piece that could go on a bookshelf 
um, in an office or in your house or something like that. So that's the plan for this quick little Easter make. And so let's go ahead and get started and I'm inviting you to join me. So let's get making. For a quick update on the book project, I do have the binding attached. This is one and a half inch in width. And so I cut one and a quarter, one, three quarters and half inch strips of chipboard and then just layered them and cut them to length so that eventually when I get to the next step of the craft stock, it will just bend over it and make it look like a book binding. Then for the edges of what would be the cover, um, you know how the cover always sticks out farther than the pages, which the book represents the pages. So I needed to make the edges of the book cover and that is made by cutting strips of chipboard an eighth of an inch wide and then I put collage medium on them and then I just line them up against the edge of the box and I put them around three sides. So you can see that it's around the top, the side, and the bottom of the box opposite of the binding. And you do that on both sides of your book. And I wanted it to stick out a little more than I usually do. So I did two layers of the eighth inch chipboard. So if you look carefully, you can kind of see that I have two layers in on there. And I did the same thing once the first layer was adhered down, I just went over it with the second layer. And I'll show you how we get this covered to make it look like a book cover when I get to that point. But before I start covering it, I needed to then make the, the box look like uh, pages. And so I always take my scissors and I keep them closed and I carefully just kind of score all along on each side and on the corners to try and make it look like book pages. And then I paint it with antique linen distress paint. This takes sometimes a couple of coats because of the, the burning, the charring that they do on the wood. So sometimes I have to paint it several times to get that covered. And then silly enough, once I do get it covered, and we're good to go, then I antique it with Distress uh, Crayon Walnut Stain, uh, usually just to kind of go down into the crevices and then, you know, to wipe it off. But uh, anyway, that's just, you know, the steps that I go through. Now on the inside, I had to make a couple of adjustments. This is a quarter of an inch lower than the edge of the large box, which is fine. I also popped off the top panel on the smaller box because I'm going to be threading the lights through and I wanted them to be able to shine down. All right, I covered it with just some green floral because I have decided that the outside cover is going to go ahead and be this green and so I thought they went well together and then they would allow the, the bunny and all the things inside to shine and not be the focal point. All right, then I kind of sanded down this back side and I may have to do it a little more with my Dremel to get it to fit. But I think that once I start actually putting the cover on that things are gonna work out all right. I tried to put this at about the, like if I have it on the front edge here, this just barely sticks out. I mean, just, the smallest amount and I'm going to put a probably a velvet ribbon or bow there anyway and so I think that I'm going to be okay with that but if I need to I will just go ahead and maybe sand down the back just a little bit more but I think we're going to be good so and then we'll be able to see the light coming down and I think it's going to look great. The book is ready to for me to light up and also to put the cover on. So I'm going to have to do this different than I normally do. And I'm going to start by covering the back first. So I'm going to put my craft stock on the back. 
and then I'll go ahead and put my cover on and have it make sure that it overhangs that little bit on all the way around so it can cover over here for the um, the front part of the cover. So I'll work on that. And then once I get that set, I'm going to drill the hole, redrill the hole back here. I need to thread the lights through, get them set and done. And then once that's all done, I will attach this over the lights. So the way I'm gonna do the lights is once they come through the back, I'm gonna wind this thick part that doesn't have any lights will go up and then I will wind them around this piece. This piece is going to be attached to the ceiling or the, well, the top of the book up here on the inside. And then I'm gonna cover it all over with this piece of chipboard that will even the whole front out. So that makes it even. Then I can, once that's done, then I can go ahead and finish and attach the rest of the cover, which is this piece of heavy stock and craft. And then you can see how that makes this part of the book look like a curved binding. And then I'll go ahead and finish with the rest of the cover and wrap it around onto the little front edges of the cover and we'll be done with the cover. So once that dries and I feel like it's on there nice and secure, nothing's going anywhere, then I will go back and I'm going to put this on and center it. And then I'm going to draw and I'll cut the oval so that I have my opening over the little square. So that's how that's all going to work. And I'm going to do it in fast forward, but I wanted to talk through what I was doing and why I was doing it so that as you see me in fast forward, you know why I'm doing it this way. Normally, when I don't have lights, I don't have to worry about any of that. And all I do, because I don't have a box in here, I just cover the whole thing with this and then I cover it with this and we're good to go. But since I can't, I need to do it in steps. We're going to do a little differently this time. So let's get this lit up.
finished the opening in the book. The light shines, so it'll shine on the bunny and everything that I put in there. And then uh, this covers up the rough opening. And because it has this kind of funny little thing out here, that's not going to show. I will have uh, Easter grass and ribbon and some things like that that'll go there. So nobody's going to see that part. But I think that looks fun and springy and Eastery. So I'm just going to do a couple of more touch-ups before I attach that. I need to go around with the either walnut stain or ground espresso, whichever one that you have. I usually use walnut stain. And I will go around and do this, make sure that I get that all the way around. And then also just a little bit in the central area to make it look old. And on each end as well. And then I usually go around on the edges and I'll rub that in because I've gone over the whole thing with Distress Collage Medium. If you get some in a spot that you don't want because you, if you put Collage Medium over the whole thing, you can just wipe it off like that. And so this, I will just edge to make it look older like that. You can hear my cat Exitensio trying to work his way in. He's a naughty one. Okay. So that's basically the front. And then I'll just go this way on the sides. You'll notice I haven't gone back to the page pages yet. And you could, if you want, put some letters on here that said Easter or bunnies or rabbits or whatever you want. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is because I am under the gun with shipping date looming. So I need to finish this. Maybe I'll do it when I get back. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing around the back. And then what you do Okay, there we go. What you do on the front part is you can do this if you want, but your fingers are going to start to get sore. So usually I just do a little water and then I'll take brush and I like to get that all over then oh he made it in you can hear him do his little trill pretty much it. You just want it to look a little bit distressed. Then do the same thing on all of the sides so, uh, for the book pages. And then you, I will attach this. So that's what I'm going to complete right now.
so you can see that some of them the back part isn't colored and I couldn't quite figure out why but like these green ones they're colored all the way over uh, and then like these kind of mauvey pink ones only one side so what I figured out was to get them colored all the way around that when I put it in I would blow on it and then just carefully, so instead of just kind of like shaking, uh, you just carefully and blow on it as you go. So I'm gonna take a couple of these uh, and separate them out. So let's take these kind of pinky purple ones, which were, what color is this, pink sherbet? And they turned like a purpley color, which I'm not sure why, but maybe it's because it has kind of purple undertones. So let me put that there. The orange ones did it. And I didn't have a light orange. And so I used uh, sunshine yellow and coral to get that color. This one is coral with one drop of the sherbet. Okay, the green one seems to be fine, but I'll just stick these over there. And that one is botanical. This one is sunshine, the yellow one. And then the blue one is pool. So I'm going to put a little alcohol ink in and try these again. We'll just see if I can get them right this time. All right. And I'm gonna put on this one, just for the fun of it, a little gumball. Okay. I don't know that it'll be completely even like if I was starting over because I have so much, but okay, those look better. So if you were afraid you were going to inhale the fumes, I would get the blower. So I'm going to get that. Okay, so I have the blower, and now I'm gonna put in uh, two drops of the coral, and then the sunshine yellow. Okay. pretty good and that worked so if you're afraid you were gonna inhale that seems to work pretty well So some of my older colors were kind of fun to try out for a more uh, maybe vintage uh, color. And then these are the bright colors that I used with the newer alcohol ink colors. And I think they turned out, they're fun. It's a fun, different, different palette, uh, but I really like it. As you saw in Tim's video the and tutorial, uh, he 
cover this with foundry wax in sterling and then once it was dry he went over it with ground espresso on a uh, distress stencil brush so i have those here ready and so i'm going to paint the bunny with the foundry wax once that's done i'll go ahead and heat it and then i will go over it with the um, distress crayon and then we'll be ready to go so i thought i would kind of update you because i may just continue on and in case i do i have my um, eggs are all colored and ready to go and then i put a little one inch ball i cut part of it off and stuck it in the uh, barrel and then I had sanded off the back of the barrel so that when it goes in the book it doesn't stick out very far and it will go flat against the wall back there and then the bunny will just just barely fit in there all right so then I needed some grass uh, to go in the basket and then I want some around with some of the eggs kind of around in the bottom and so what I did to because I couldn't decide what color I wanted so I actually went on Amazon and they have this Easter it's 12 colors of Easter grass raffia paper shreds and so you get 12 different colors like this pale pink you get kind of a peachy color uh, a darker peachy color a couple of different yellows an orange this is kind of a lavender, got a light blue, a brown, a dark green, then this light green, and red. So you really have a lot of options with that, and it was really affordable, so I thought that was really fun, and then I could save the rest for, you know, gift bags or something like that. So anyway, I looked through and decided, I was kind of trying to decide what I wanted and I thought well I didn't want the grass to be the focal point I actually want the bunny and the these to be the focal point so I thought this kind of went with the whole family that I was working with and so I think I'm gonna stick with the green so I'll put a little green in here I'll put a little green in the corners of the little box and then um, I'll build this outside before I put it in then I will actually stick a few in, a few eggs in and around with tweezers. So that's the plan. So all I have left is to attach the eggs to this and then I'll go ahead and I'm going to put some glue down for the grass. I will hot glue this in place when I'm done. And then I'll just add some eggs around here with probably hot glue since it's it's faster. And then I need to decide if I'm going to put something on the front of the book, like a word plaque or a, a ribbon or something like that. I feel like I want to have something on here and I haven't decided quite what yet. So... When we come back, I will have the finished product and we'll talk through it. Well, makers, as we look at this, here's the final product. And I think it turned out just the way I was hoping. I really love it. So we have the edges of the box that I scratched up so that they would look like the worn edges of an old book. We have that book binding that goes around the edges here and you know I just love how the distress crayon really fixes any maybe little mistakes or things that maybe you you might think oh that's not perfect it's okay just cover it up with distress crayon and you'll you'll be good love how the binding turned out over here it just really feels like a little book to me and I love that so have that extra vignette box there on the inside I have the little barrel with the salvage rabbit that Tim designed and made. Only thing, I added a little ribbon right there, but other than that, and mainly I added it there because it didn't fit up at the top because of the opening size. 
So in the bottom here, you can see that I added some of the green um, kind of Easter basket grass that I got from Walmart. I have some of that in the barrel as well. Added a few extra eggs kind of on the sides. Uh, this is a um, base a baseboard uh, little thing that just says limited edition because this is a limited edition. I won't be making any more. One of the lace baseboard frames. And then this piece I've had for quite some time. And I just thought, you know what? I think that really fits well. So I just put a little bit of foundry wax on this adornment piece. And I thought, oh, that just fits perfectly right across the top there. Kind of ties in the bunny and and the whole feeling here. And so I really, I really like it. I know it's very simple, but um, I like this piece. And I think it's going to go really well in my bookcase when I decorate for spring and for Easter. It's going to just look great. And it'll add a little bit of light maybe in, on a dark shelf and bring just a little bit of spring charm to my bookcases. So I want to thank you for watching my tutorial. If you have any questions, all you have to do is go to my blog that's linked in the description here. And there is a little contact section at the right hand corner and you can email me that way and I will be glad to get back to you to answer any questions you may have or any clarifications that you might need. I really, really, truly appreciate you watching the video. I hope that you found something that would be inspirational to you in this and, and, and I hope that you have a very creative day.